February 4th meeting of the Thousand Oaks Youth Commission is called to order at 6.30. Uh, could we first have the Pledge of Allegiance led by Commissioner Bryman? Everyone, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. <coughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Commissioner Bryman. Uh, next up is roll call with Francine Spiegel. Please say here present when I call your name. Commissioner Bird. Present. Commissioner Boyajan is absent. Commissioner Brousseau. Present. Commissioner Bryman. Present. Commissioner Cutler Dye. Here. Commissioner Letterer. Present. Commissioner McGuigan. Here. Commissioner Nash. Here. Commissioner Owens. Here. Commissioner Saute. Here. Commissioner Schooley. Present. Commissioner Shaw. Here. Commissioner Walshaw. Here. Adult Commissioner Martinez. Here. And Adult Commissioner Petrus. Present. Thank you. Thank you. Um, next, we have public comments. Uh, Commissioner Schooley, could you please introduce this portion of our meeting? Uh, so this is the portion of our meeting where anyone with concerns or comments can come to the podium. At this time, are there any public comments? There being none, let's move on. Okay. Um, next is our guest speaker with Commissioner Owens. Okay, today we have Claire Prager, who is the Vice President of Talent Selection at the Cheesecake Factory. Claire has had 15 years of talent experience for the Cheesecake Factory. She has a proven track record in operations, project man management, vendor management, career development, and performance management. As VP of Talent Selection, Claire leads an enterprise recruiting efforts for 35,000 staff and managers, including two bakery production facilities. Claire manages all aspects of operations, including the strategic planning and development of her department. Prior to human resources, Claire, sp Claire spent 10 years in the restaurant operations. Without further ado, here's Claire Prager from the Cheesecake Factory. Thank you, Katie. Well, hello, everybody. I'm, I'm just so um, enamored by you all. Wow, I want to hire you all right now. That's what I do. All right, I'm in recruiting, and I work for the Cheesecake Factory, and I've been there 16 years. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about what it's like to have a job or a career in the restaurant, okay? So, uh, again, my name is Claire. I'm the vice president, of, pri vice president of Talent Selection. So Talent Selection, that means we're selecting the best talent. We used to call it recruiting. We don't call it anymore. It's a pretty fun name. Talent selection. Cheesecake Factory. You've probably all dined at the Cheesecake Factory, right? Yeah, you love it. I'm sure you all have your favorite thing out of our 250 items, that huge menu. Well, we started 36 years ago just down in Los Angeles. So we're an L.A.-based company, and this was our first restaurant right here. So you can see, you know the Cheesecake Factory started upscale casual dining, there was no thing. There used to be casual dining like Chili's and Applebee's, and then there was Mastro's, like across the street. There was nothing in between. When David Overton, who I work with every day, decided to create the Cheesecake Factory, he worked with his parents. I'm gonna show you a picture of them. No, I don't have a picture of them. So he, uh, he started with his parents, and uh, he's college educated, and he was a drummer in a band, and he came back to his parents in Los Angeles and said, I want to start a restaurant, and I want it to be an upscale restaurant, and I want to have these beautiful cheesecakes in the front that his mom made from scratch. And he created the Cheesecake Factory, and this is the restaurant that he opened in Beverly Hills in 1978 with his mom and dad. So a little bit about us. So we started in Beverly Hills in 1978, and today we have uh, about 186 restaurants. And that's not including our international locations. We have about 15 international locations. We have locations in Dubai, in Kuwait, um, and in Guadalajara, and we're opening in Shanghai soon, in Shanghai Disney. Um, we have, uh, as Katie said, we've got two bakery facilities. We make 20 thousand cheesecakes a day right here in Calabasas right down the street sometimes when you're driving by when I go to work in the morning I'm pulling in and I see the smoke coming up out of the build out of our factory and I get out of my car and I smell we're making some kind of chocolate cheesecake today it's the coolest thing ever like I work for the cheesecake factory 
They're making 20,000 cakes today in that factory that are going to get shipped out to the restaurants and going to get shipped out so you can all eat them. So we've got, we've got our two bakery facilities and um, all our restaurants. And we have two other concepts besides the Cheesecake Factory. We have Grand Lux Cafe. Anybody heard of Grand Lux? Ever been to Las Vegas? Maybe the Venetian Hotel. It's a really, really awesome restaurant there. Well, we founded that, and we, yeah, he's been. Yeah, Jeremy, right? Yeah, Jeremy's been there. And um, it's awesome. It's so cool. We have 13 locations, and we're opening an, another location um, in King of Prussia, uh, Philadelphia, coming up soon. And we have an Asian restaurant, Rock Sugar. So we have that in Los Angeles. And if you like Thai cuisine, you've got to check it out. It's really, really awesome. So our mission what, what do we strive to do? What makes us good at what we do? We strive every day to create an environment where absolute guest satisfaction is our highest priority. It's all about you. It's about the guests. It's about making you happy every single day. And everything that we do, you imagine the 250 menu items, the three to 400, <clears throat> the three to 400 staff members, the managers, that's their mission every single day to, to provide absolute guest satisfaction. So a lot goes into that, and we're going to talk about it in a minute. You know we have the extensive menu, right? We've got the regular menu. We've got the skinny-licious menu. We've got the kids menu. We've got the bakery menu. We've got 50 cheesecakes, 50 flavors of cheesecake. We make 75 sauces from scratch every single day, from scratch. Every single thing we make is from scratch. We don't have a microwave. We don't pour it out of a bottle. We make every ranch dressing. We make it from scratch. Your favorite ranch dressing with your chicken littles. That's my son, my 12-year-old son. He loves those. They're the best. Um, we make that from scratch every day. And the garlic has to be perfect. And if the garlic's overripe, it's going to be too spicy. Did you know that ranch dressing could be too spicy? Yep, it can be. That's what I learned working at the Cheesecake Factory. We have amazing portions, right? Huge. Yeah, too big, right? Usually you get my kids, my kids share um, the chicken marsala. That's our favorite. And we get extra, extra sauce on the side. So they both get their sides of the chicken marsala sauce and then they share it. And so one wine item can feed both of them. And we talked about the desserts. Lots of great desserts. Our service, um, we've won awards for our service. And every day we want our guests to look just like those people there, those exceptionally happy people. So a little bit about me. thought I would uh, tell you that I've only ever had four jobs in my life. Four jobs. And three out of those four jobs was in the restaurant. So my very first job was a hostess. I walked in to our little restaurant and applied. As soon as I was able to get a job, I walked in and I got a job as a hostess. It was not the Cheesecake Factory, but I got a job. And then I quickly became a server. And then when I was 21, I became a bartender. And I put myself through college, and I paid for my first car with cash while going to school full time. The restaurant industry can be a great job. And I had no intentions of spending my life, my career, in the restaurant business. It was great money. So that's the number thing. It can be a great job. You make great money, and you know, some of the friends you make in the restaurant will be the friends you have forever. It's like a family. We always say the restaurant industry is like a family. I majored in broadcast journalism at New York University. So I was going to school full time. My dad lost his job. He had no money to pay for my college. So I had to pay for school and uh, worked full time in the restaurant. And the restaurant was the best thing ever because I had flexible hours and I made great money. And I got that car. Then I went on and I got a real job, what I thought was a real job, in, uh, in broadcasting. I worked in New York City. Um, I worked for um, a television production company that produced videos and commercials and PSAs. And then I decided that really wasn't the right job for me. And so I moved on and I got a, a job in the restaurant industry again because I had a calling to go back into the restaurant industry. And I spent about, spent about seven years working again in the restaurant industry, and I got to travel. And one of the things you get to do when you work for a restaurant company is they will send you around the world. And you'll get to live in hotels and get to eat 
and get to do these amazing things and you don't have to pay a penny and you're getting this life experience. I got to do openings in fun cities like New Orleans, New York City, Monterey, Brecking, Breckenridge, Colorado. I went all over the country and I ended up in Hawaii. I lived in Hawaii, yep, yeah, I lived in Hawaii for two years. They moved me there, they moved my car that I bought with cash, my 10 year old Honda, because at that point I was 30. They moved me there and I lived in Hawaii for a few years. I managed a restaurant and had the best time in my life. And then I heard about Cheesecake Factory. And Cheesecake Factory was just getting big and they were just opening restaurants. And, I'm like, and my mom kept saying, when are you gonna get that real job again? I'm like, mom, I have a real job. I'm a restaurant manager. I'm a business manager. We manage hundreds of staff, hundreds of thousands of dollars, if not millions of dollars. I have a P&L. I have a real job, Mom. So really, it's, it's interesting how we have to sometimes convince our parents that are, yeah, Douglas over here understands. If anyone here has any um, of your family that runs a restaurant, it's interesting. That is a real job, and it's the hardest job out there. It's the hardest job, washing dishes, cooking. I had to convince my mom that... This was a real job. So she finally got her head around that, and I got a job at Cheesecake Factory, and they moved me back to California, and I started um, in Irvine. And I was a restaurant manager for a year, and then David, our founder, that, that drummer that I told you about, um, he saw me and asked me, he said, I think you could go into recruiting, and I think you could represent our brand. At the time, we only had 20 restaurants, and I took a chance and I went into recruiting. And 16 years later, I get to head up 186 restaurants and about 36,000 employees now and all the hiring that we do. And I absolutely love it. So you never know where you're gonna end up. So this is my website that I created. Um, we just launched a military program I'm so passionate about. I have no family in the military. I know nothing about the military. And I have learned so much. I've partnered with Mayor Garcetti in Los Angeles, and I'm part of his, his HR council to help guide the council in Los Angeles and how employers will connect to military and their families and get them jobs. And I've got to tell you that, that that program and that connection probably gives me the most satisfaction right now. And we are um, we're visiting Camp Pendleton and Miramar, and we were just there on Friday, and we identified two kitchen managers and five line cooks. And we're going to the Navy bases in March, so um, we're so excited. So anyone that wants to apply for a job with us, this is where they go. And I update this website with my team and with my advertising agency um, weekly. We change this. So hourly staff jobs. So when we're looking for someone to work at the Cheesecake Factory, we, we say, are they so cheesecake? Do you have cheesecake in your veins? Do you have cheesecake in your veins? We literally, you've got to have it. What does that mean? Some of you have it, I can see already. Because you're smiling, you're nodding, and you're loving. You love the food. You love the energy. You love the passion. When you go to that restaurant, you love the colors. You love that feeling. And so I put some of the words up here that I think represent what it means to be so cheesecake. To be that person like me that started 16 years ago, and I'm still there. I love it. I love it every single day. I work really hard, but I'll go back every day and I'm going to give it my best. So it's fun, definitely. We have a lot of fun. We love to celebrate. You know, cake, get it? Cake, cheesecake. Okay. We celebrate everything. <sighs> Got to go to the gym. So fast pace, we're, we're always going. Cutting edge, I'm going, to I'm going to tell you in a minute about some of the cutting edge things we do. And we are so passionate about serving the guest and taking care of you, you, you guests, every single one of you. So I'm sure you are familiar with all the positions that you can get at the Cheesecake Factory. So as soon as you turn 18, you can apply for any of these positions. If you don't have any experience, you can apply for a host or a dishwasher. Katie and I were just talking about that tonight. Um, if you've got some experience, you might be able to come right in as a server at 18. And you could do exactly what I did. Make enough money to buy that car, pay for college, get your start in the restaurant industry. And then if you're passionate about cooking, like Jeremy over here, I was just talking to him, who cooks. He actually likes to bake. But if you're passionate about baking and cooking, you could be a line cook, then you could be a kitchen manager, then you could be a culinary manager at the corporate center just down the street. We have our R&D center there. So there's so many opportunities. 
If you decide to go into management uh, years later, you could go into the front of the house or the kitchen, sometimes also known as the back of the house. We don't like to call it the back of the house. We like to call it the kitchen. Kitchen, they're on par, right? Back doesn't sound, doesn't sound so pleasant. So the Cheesecake Factory, we keep them on par, the front and the kitchen. It's the, the house, the full house, right? You have to have both. And you can see that there are um, parallel positions as you go through the career pathing as a manager. So when we hire you as a restaurant manager, you have to have the qualities to be so cheesecake. You have to be fun, energetic, positive. You have to have, be business-minded. You have to have that business acumen. And you will go through a 10-week training program. And that training program is almost like boot camp. You're going to learn everything about the restaurant industry in 10 weeks. And then after that, you, uh, you, do, have a, you do have a mentor that will help you because it's, it's your first time. Just like most, most good programs will we'll pair you up with someone that's experienced and you can go to them and you can ask them if you have any challenges. And then you have a career path and everyone goes through the same path. No one skips, no one jumps, no one gets hired in externally. Everyone starts as a kitchen manager in training and, or a restaurant manager in training and goes through level one, level two, level three, level four. Level one is mastering the nuts and bolts. You have to run a shift. You have to run a shift and get hot food hot, cold food cold, butts in seats, and make money. That's it, mastering the bolts, the nuts and bolts. Level two, mastering the shift. You gotta get, you, we call it spinning plates. You've gotta spin the plates. You've gotta be able to make sure that every plate in the restaurant is spinning and nothing's crashing and nothing's going in the weeds. We've got all these words in the rest, all these, this terminology in the restaurant industry. So you're gonna master the shift. And then when you get to level three, when you're a senior two manager, you get to start developing others and impacting others. And then uh, level four is a general manager or an executive kitchen manager where you get to lead the team, okay? We have an institute where you get to train. We have a Cheesecake Factory Institute. We bring 50 to 60 managers in right here to Calabasas, and they go through three to four days of training. You can see them in, their, in the kitchen there training, and we focus on people first because we're in the people business. We're in the service industry, so we focus on people first, and then profit because we are a business. We gotta make money, and food is why we're there, and operational excellence. How do we run our restaurant? Um, at the highest capacity. I told you earlier that we are considered a pretty cutting edge restaurant. So uh, we're one of the first restaurants in casual dining to do away with tickets, paper tickets, where the server writes in and hands it in and back in the day, you put it on that little spindle. Yeah, so we have video system. Every cook has their own video and it's touch screen. And if my filet mignon well done, got ordered with uh, my salad, they're not gonna get cooked at the same time, right? My filet mignon needs to be fired now, my salad needs to be fired in 15 minutes. So my video system is, gonna, is going to tell me when I need to start cooking my order. So it helps with quality, timing, um, loss prevention, things like that. Our red carpet front desk system is an electronic uh, check-in system. I'm sure you've been to the Cheesecake Factory and you check in and you get your pager. It's all electronic and they text you. Um, we have kitchen video. Every single recipe we have is on a video. We don't do paper anymore. That's been uh, electronic for years. We have a back office inventory system that's 100% electronic as well, and online applications. So no more paper. Everything's electronic, and we're pretty cutting edge. Um, and we've done this uh, ahead of our competitors, so we're proud of that. So I've told you a lot about the Cheesecake Factory and what it takes to get in there and what the career pathing is going to be like. And now Chloe is going to show us what it's like to work at the Cheesecake Factory. When I found out that we were actually recognized by the Fortune 100's best companies to work for, I was so full of pride. You know, it makes you feel really, really good, you know? That's a passion. When I found out that we were recognized for one of the best companies to work for, I felt justified. It's not even just working. You're having fun when you walk into this building. You get to build relationships. And to me, that, that mattered the most. It's so great to come to work and actually love what you do. I love working here. We truly are here to make a difference. No matter how hard it is, no matter how much time it's going to take, we're going to make it happen. 
It's a wonderful honor. An award like this isn't one overnight. It's one because of a history of doing what's right and taking great care of people and understanding that people come first in our business. So for us to be on the list, it shows how well we're doing in all of our restaurants around the world. I knew we were a great place to work. For 15 years, I've known that. But it was so amazing to finally have that recognition. We did it. We made it. This is amazing. So I couldn't be more proud and happy and just blessed to be a part of this company. Also for the people that have been around forever to finally get recognized publicly for the company that they built, I thought was an unbelievable honor. It just captures the essence of who we are. There was this goal to be recognized by the outside world as a great place to work, while at the same time, the goal is really just to be a great place to work. This is a public confirmation of what we hope every single person feels at the Cheesecake Factory, which is they're part of something really special. Because that's what we do every day. We bring smiles to our guest faces, we bring smiles to our staff's faces. And if you can do that and you can love that, then you'll love working for the Cheesecake Factory. So every year, Fortune Magazine picks the top 100 companies to work for in the United States. And there's only been two restaurant companies that have ever made it in the list. And Starbucks is one of them. They're considered a restaurant. And Darden Restaurant Company that owns, uh, oh, they, they have many, many, many concepts. You know Red Lobster, Olive Garden. They know that. So they made it. And we just got into the Fortune 100 Best Places to Work list last year. And we're hoping we'll get on that list again this year. And like the video shows you, it really is the most amazing place to work. Um, and you feel just so, so rewarded every day because you're taking care of, taking care of guests and you are so prideful of this amazing menu and this amazing heritage. So um, I wanted to thank you for having me here tonight. And hopefully I shared with you a little bit about uh, what it would be like to have a job or a career in the restaurant. It doesn't have to be the Cheesecake Factory. It could be anywhere. And it really... It can take you a long way. It's going to teach you a lot of skills that will get you far. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Prager. Um, now, is there any questions related to the talk? Yes, Commissioner Chow. Hi. Um, this isn't a question. I just wanted to comment. Um, Cheesecake Factory has been like one of my family's most beloved <laughs> restaurants for a long time, which is ironic because... Um, me and my brother, I only have one brother, but we are, um, as I like to call it, aggressively lactose intolerant. Um, and I'm going to tell you right now, it's probably not good for us, but I know that my brother, um, whenever we go to Cheesecake Factory, takes a look at the menu and says, it's worth it. And he Aww. literally will down that cheesecake, and then he's like, okay, we need to get home like now. So. <laughs> Well, that, that, see, uh, thank you. Thank you. And we have raving fans like you and your brother and, uh, and, you know, our goal is every day to make you happy. And we're actually getting better at um, allergies and uh, just cross-contamination. We're really learning how to deal with, because we've got such a big menu. So we need to take care of people like, like you and your brother. So thank you. Commissioner Bird. Hi, I don't have a question I have another comment but um sorry I know someone who worked at Cheesecake Factory and they worked there for so many years and they just loved it and I thought it was really awesome that oh. it was yes. such a good place to work you know I'm 16 years there and I'm surrounded by people that are 10 15 years it seems like people start at Cheesecake Factory they stay and that's not common nowadays people don't stay at jobs so yeah there's just there's special something special about working at Cheesecake Factory Commissioner Brousseau I promise I have a question. So um, how did you get involved with this project with veterans, and, and why did you find it so important? Great question, actually. Um, as the vice president of recruiting, I'm always looking for applicant pools that we haven't tapped into. So where can I advertise or where can we source applicants hourly applicants and management applicants to staff our restaurants. Again, we have 36,000 employees. And in the restaurant industry, typically fast food restaurants, 100% turnover. So that means they lose everybody that gets hired in one year. They leave. In casual dining, it's about 75% turnover. Cheesecake, we have 60% turnover. So we're, mo we're losing more than half our staff every year, right? So we need to figure out where are we going to find the next best staff member. 
And it makes great sense that we should consider military. And But the military applicants, they don't think about working in the restaurant industry, and they don't have the right resume. And so once I started talking to veterans, and I got connected with um, with Mayor Garcetti, and once I just did the research, it just it was it, it made sense as for the business. And then you think about how you're giving back to the community. These veterans that have served for I mean I'm just I'm so touched about what the veterans have done for us, and when we look at the homelessness of veterans and how they can't get jobs because businesses. Uh, don't recognize their skills as transferable. And the key is training my managers to understand that this, a skill that a veteran has absolutely can transfer into our environment. So it requires training um, and immersion into to the veteran communities. And so, um, so it both offered us an opportunity to widen our applicant pool and then also to give back, give back to these people that have served for our country. So, you know, it, it, um, it to me, it's, it's I, every, every business should be doing it. And in fact, in Los Angeles, um, Mayor Cassetti has committed that we will hire 10,000 veterans in two years. So we will. Our goal is to reduce um, homelessness of the veterans that uh, cannot get jobs when they come back after serving for three years, after serving for five years. You know, twenty-year-old men and women that have served that come back and can't get jobs because they don't have any other work experience. Well, they've got three to five years working in the military, and that experience, that experience, is more valuable than most experience out there, and is understanding. The, the technical skill, the education, and, and the competencies. And then um, military veterans are, 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 you know, loyal and courageous and hardworking and all those things we know. So they most often are a great fit for, for most businesses. Commissioner um, Petrus. Thank you. Um, I don't have a question. I have a comment. Um, and it's a thank you comment. Uh, I run a um, food insecure program uh, here in the mornings uh, in Thousand Oaks and Cheesecake Factory under the National Harvest Program uh, is one of the restaurants that participates. So instead of soup going down the into the trash and into the landfill, uh, we do pick it up from your restaurant. And I've learned a lot by going into the back kitchen. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I will say that I have been so warmly received over the three or four years that we have been doing it. And the other, but we don't get, we never get any cheesecakes though. <laughs> I think everybody eats those, so they're not, they're not, you know, they're not given out. Everybody goes to the restaurant and eat them, so there's never any leftover cheesecake. But it's very nice that you are providing food for the food insecure in the program, and it is helping to keep uh, the youth in the community in the schools because we're able to mm -hmm. uh, give them extra food to the families. So thank you. You're welcome. Commissioner Byrne. Hi, I have a question Hi. this time. It's not okay. a comment. Um, you said uh, Cheesecake Factory is now going international. Does that af are you in charge of like recru recruiting for international too? And does that like affect like your applicant pool? Mm. And how does like the international? That's an, a, that? a very astute question, Commissioner Bird. Um, originally, I was told about five years ago that I would have no responsibility for international recruiting because we had partners, and the partners were going to take care of it. Well, we quickly realized that the partners, they weren't going to take care of it. And I had to I had to find Cheesecake Factory restaurant managers that would go over there. So that was the first thing. They're going to go to Kuwait and Dubai and um, KSA and all, all these countries in the Middle East. Then Mexico came along. And then I learned what expat was and secund secunded. I learned all these words I'd never heard before. And I did have to learn all about what it was like to recruit. And then it's like uh, we're loaning out a manager. We'll, we'll, give, we'll, we'll loan them out for a year. So we do that. And now we're recruiting for Asia. I'm recruiting for Shanghai right now and Hong Kong. And those, I'm, I'm doing um, a very diverse uh, recruiting strategy. And I need to hire, um, they could be cheesecake managers that that have the language skills, or they could be uh, U.S. domiciled, which means they live here, and we'll train them for a year, or they could be Asia domiciled, or they could be expats. 
So it's pretty fascinating, and it is a whole new language for me and a whole new experience. So yes, um, it, it is really exciting. It's really exciting to hire for the international partners. Any more questions? Did I miss any? Okay, well, that was a wonderful presentation. Thank you so much for telling us um, how rewarding and um, how rewarding a career in the restaurant business can be and all the skills that you can learn from it and develop through that career. That's uh, really cool to know. So thank you, Ms. Prager, and back to you, Commissioner Rousseau. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, next up, we have school and liaison reports, so I'm going to turn the meeting over to Vice Chair Sauté. Thanks, Chair Brousseau. Item six is school and liaison reports. In addition to being an advisory body to city council, the Youth Commission also appoints commissioners to act as liaisons to various youth organizations. Commissioner Letter, will you please introduce the ASG portion of our meeting? Yes, of course. This is a portion of our meeting um, <coughs> where we invite representatives from our local schools to come in, talk about current events. Um, I would like to ask Spencer Walshaw and Skylar Vines to go up and talk about Kalina Middle School, please. Hi, my name is Spencer Walshaw, Kalina's president. And I'm Skylar Vines, Kalina's vice president. Recently, Kalina had a future Cougar night where incoming sixth graders were introduced to the campus, teachers, and programs held at Kalina. Some of the upcoming Kalina events are the Winter Wonderland Dance and Social on February 20th, My Stuff Bags Charity, where we collect toiletries and school supplies for My Stuff Bags from February 23rd to February 27th, and the Jogathon Assembly on February 12th. And just yesterday, Kalina met with Rod Cordova from the Thousand Oaks um, um, Public Works de Department, and he talked to Kalina's ASB about how to improve recycling in our community and at our campus. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, next, I would like to ask Ethan and Tian from Westlake High School to go and talk about stuff. Hi, my name is Ethan Lee, and I am a sophomore currently attending Westlake High School. Uh, tonight, I am here to present the past events at, that have taken place at Westlake. Westlake High School's dra drama class recently performed their winter production, Get Smart, which resulted in a complete success. They are now undergoing the process of preparing for their next production, Romeo and Juliet. The time and location is yet to be announced, but make sure you stay alert for more information. January 23rd marked the end of the first semester. I would personally like to congratulate all students for ending the school half of the school year on a good note, hopefully. Additionally, the Westlake Warriors are running strong on field and court. Last week, the soccer and basketball team played Moore Park and Thousand Oaks High School. Finally, the ACA or also known as a class act, a community service ensemble featuring Westlake's top singers also performed last week. Thank you. Hi, my name is Tian Yi and I'm also in 10th grade at Westlake High School. Um, uh, so on the 6th of February, which is this Friday, Advanced Anatomy will be hosting their talent show. Uh, I personally do not know what they will be doing, perhaps juggling or cutting up cadavers. However, if you do wish to attend, prepare your wallets as there is an entrance fee. Now, on the same day, HOSA will be hosting a bake sale at the bridge. Um, uh, later, later during the uh, next week, from the 9th to the 12th, e there will be an Eco Schools fundraiser, and they will sell plants at the wigwam at lunch. Uh, if your house needs any, perhaps any more potted plants, your mom likes greens, walk over to the wigwam and just buy some plants. <laughs> From the 13th to the 16th, it's President's Day weekend. President's Day weekend uh, is the last uh, long day weekend before spring break. It's what's con uh, commonly referred to as the marathon in the school year, where we have many five-day weeks of pain and torture. Uh, the Hope Hospital Bake Sale, which will be after school at the Bridge, and the East Coast College Tour Interest Meeting will both be on the 17th of February.
from 6.30 to 7 p.m. in the College and Career Center. Future Warrior Night will be on the 18th of February and is from 6 to 9 p.m. This is where future Westlake students, mo uh, all of them 8th graders, will be able to tour Westlake campus and see all that Westlake has to offer. And finally, on the 21st of February, there will be a track car wash. Uh, I understand there are tickets involved, but if you haven't snagged one, you can probably go over there and pay them yourselves. Now, there aren't any uh, performances or concerts in February as February is a short month, but hey, we have to do with what we have. Just a quick note, um, really quickly for the A, um, the anatomy uh, show that Tian mentioned, it actually is really fantastic. You can get anyone from like playing classical piano to like doing the single ladies dance. So yeah, show up, thanks. Thank you so much, guys. All right, lastly, I have um, Savannah Tunnel from Newbury Park High School. So, hello, I'm Savannah Tunnel from Newbury Park High School. So, I'd just like to start off with saying how proud our school is of our sports, and especially our winter sports this season. They've done really well. And so, for example, our incredibly talented dance team has earned the title of Grand Champions at their most recent competition, as well as our boys varsity basketball team that has made their way up to Division 1A, and our girls water polo team that has placed second in the league. Um, also this week, FHA Hero Club at our school has organized a lemonade stand that started yesterday and will continue until Friday. The proceeds of the lemonade stand will go towards research of rare diseases in cancer in children. So far, it has been a big su success. Looking ahead, many of our talented students at the school will have the op opportunity to audition for the exciting school-wide talent show. Lastly, the students are looking forward to our winter formal coming up this Saturday, and the theme of this year's winter formal will be a night in New York should be pretty cool. A lot of preparation has taken place for this and it's very anticipated. So thank you. Thank you so much. And that wraps it up for the ASB report. So thank you. The next item is the Teen Center Advisory Committee. Will Teen Center Liaison Commissioner McGuigan please introduce this portion of the meeting. Yeah, we will do. Um, so we had some pretty awesome events going on at the Teen Center lately. Uh, some of the highlights of January were we took a group of 15 students to the Clippers versus Celtics game on Monday, January 19th. The Clippers won and Teen Center Director Micah Anderson treated everyone to McConnell's ice cream in downtown LA after the game. We had 45 teens compete in a Wii U Sport uh, Super Smash Bros tournament on Sunday, January 25th. Brandon Sparks came in first place and took home a $100 gift card to GameStop. Several TOHS freshmen, uh, Zachary Mayer, Chap Carpenter, and uh, GJ helped organize the tournament. On Saturday, January 31st, we had our annual parent teen <laughs> pool tournament. Sorry, uh, We had 14 teams compete in the tournament and enjoy a, a tri-tip tri barbecue. Spencer and Jim Ladden went undefeated and took home the first place trophy. Now, here are a few events that are going on next month. On Saturday, February 7th, we will be having our first player evaluations for the Springs Boys High School Hoops League. Uh, the season will start on Saturday, February 28th, so if you play basketball, be sure to sign up. And if you don't play basketball, you should still sign up. Uh, you can sign up as a team or as an individual. Cost of the league is $100 for the season, which includes a reversible jersey. Also, on Saturday, February 7th, we will be having our Valentine's Day dance for 7th and 8th graders. The dance will feature DJ Slick and will be from 7 to 10 p.m. Cost is $10. On Friday, February 13th, we'll be taking a trip to Mountain High for a day of snowboarding and skiing. Cost is $70 and includes your lift ticket and transportation and a chartered bus with TVs. Saturday, February 21st, we'll be having an awesome concert featuring national touring band Reverse Order, who performed, who performed on America's Got Talent, as well as the Vans Warp Tour. Local bands Full Measure, After Hours, and Clockwork City will also be performing. Cost is $8 pre-sale or $10 at the door. Doors open at 7 p.m. 
Lastly, all high school and middle school parents and students should plan to attend the CVUSD Career Technical Education Showcase on Monday, February 23rd at the Teen Center. CTE teachers and students will be preparing the amazing things they produce in such classes as digital art, uh, di- digital video, vid- sorry, digital video production, biotechnology, biotechni- culinary arts, metals, metals and robotics, wood and cabinetry, visual enterprise, and many more. The CTE showcase will be from 5:30 to 7:30 p.m. We also have a sp- spectacular selection of classes going on. Here is an awesome workshop being held this Friday. DJ 101, learn how to DJ workshop, Friday, February 6th, from 6.30 to 8.30 p.m. Learn the fundamentals of DJing and get exposure to DJ equipment and technology. Students will also have a guest DJ appearance at the Teen Center, um, on, at the Teen Center Dance on Saturday night. Cost of the workshop is $25. So we have a bunch of other awesome stuff coming up, as well as more information on all the stuff I've just said. So please visit our website at www.thousandoaksteencenter.com or find us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner McGuigan. Commissioner Scully, will you please introduce the total item on the agenda? Yes, thank you, Commissioner Sote. So we have one event coming up, and that is... uh, Forsnick Science. This will be held on Saturday, February 21st from 2 to 3.15 at the Grant R. Brimhall Library. Uh, teens are invited to learn about the exciting field of Forsnick Sciences from an, ex- from an expert, Christina Tokatlian. Excuse me. Um, she is, has been involved with MS, MBA, um, for- Forsnick, Forensic Scientist, Forensic, Biology, DNA, Ventura County Sheriff's Office, Forensic Sci- Services Bureau. Uh, she will discuss what forensic science is, careers in the field, as well as her job, and she'll be sharing some real case studies. So you guys should go check that out. It'll be a really cool event. Also, just in general, you should always check out the Thousand Oaks uh, Library teen page because they have all sorts of services for teens including SAT, ACT, prep, practice. Uh, You can learn a language. You can have tutors for math, English, science, social studies and most of their almost all their programs are free so you should again check that out. It is a lot of cool free programs. Thank you. Back to Commissioner Sote. Thank you commissioners. I now turn the meeting back to Chair Brousseau. Uh, well, first of all, in my four years on the commission, Tian's uh, school report was definitely the most amusing one I've ever seen, um, while also being very informative, so thank you for that. Um, and now we're going to move on to our project reports, and I'd like to start with a the therapeutic dance. Uh, so, Commissioner McGuigan, could you please talk a little bit about that event? Okay, so the therapeutic dance will be held on March 28th this year. Um, and for those of you who don't know, the therapeutic dance is a prom-like experience for uh, teens and adults with functional disabilities. Um, so right now, as a commission, we're approaching various businesses asking for um, some sort of donation because we are completely nonprofit and we rely on these donations each year to hold the dance. Um, in addition, we finished all our deadlines last month, um, so that's good news. Um, and then. For the commissioners, remember all donations are due uh, next televised meeting. Um, And also, if you'd like to pre-register for the dance, uh, you can go to the Thousand Oaks website at, is it T-O-Oaks? T-O-Oaks.org? CRPD.org, sorry. Um, And you can register there. Or you can call 381-2739. Thank you. Okay, up next is our Youth Master Implementation Plan with Commissioner cutler Dye. Um, first, I'd like to thank everyone so much to co- for coming to our last meeting. We appreciate everyone's time and effort, and I can't wait to see how all of the events turn out. Our next meeting is next Wednesday, February 11th, from 6 to 7 p.m. at the Thousand Oaks Civic Arts Plaza in the Oak Room. And can we have Commissioner Nash tell us a little bit about the environmental team, please? Yes. In the environmental team, right now, we're working on outreach to schools and labeling trash cans so everyone know where, know where, knows where to put their trash and recycling. And um, we've postponed our cleanup event. So, yeah. Back to you, Commissioner Cutler-Dye. 
Thank you. Next, can we have Commissioner Walshaw tell us a little bit about the Drugs and Alcohol Committee? The Substance Abuse Conference for Teens is on February 21st from 9 a.m. until 1 p.m. at the Thousand Oaks Teen Center. There are also bagels, fruit, lunch, and swag bags, including a $10 Teen Center gift card included. The program is limited to only 80 people, so register now at toaks.org slash youth. Again, that's toaks.org slash youth. Um, thank you, Commissioner Walshaw. And lastly, can we have Commissioner Bryman tell us a little bit about the recreation team? Hi. Okay, so the recreation team um, has partnered with CLU for our second annual Youth First Experience Sports Exhibition. It's going to be on March 6th from 4 to 6.30, and the sports are swimming and soccer. Um, there's going to be goodie bags, and it's a really fun event, so come out and watch and support. Um, again, thank you so much to everyone who's been coming to the meetings, and our next meeting is again next Wednesday, February 11th, and I hope to see you there. Thank you, Commissioner cutler Dye. Um, next is our city internship program with Commissioners Shaw and Bird. Hi, everyone. To all the businesses interested in being a part of the city internship program and maybe hosting an inter intern, you can you still can. S it's not too late. So visit toaks.org forward slash city for more info on that. Also, for all 11th grade students who are interested in this program, don't forget that on Thursday, February 19th at 6 p.m., you can come and join us down at the Fred Cavalier Theater in the Civics Art Plaza. Um, we're going to have a really awesome event. Here's a flyer, by the way. Um, this is going to be a really awesome opportunity to come and see what businesses are taking part this year and what types of internships you may be able to get over the summer. It's a really great program. Again, like Kara said, if you are a business, it is not too late to join us. The deadline to submit an application for the businesses is February 13th. Um, I believe right now we seem to be bringing up the website at which you can apply. Again, the link is at toaks.org slash city. And once you get to that web page, what you'll see is a nice little um, web page where you can see who all our current businesses are, um, who our community partners are, such as CVUSD, Kalu, um, Conejo Youth Employment Services. And if you scroll down, you'll see a link to um, be part of our, uh, to apply and submit a business application. And once again, those are due February 13th. Oh, are the youth ones up there too? The youth ones are going to be up there? And the youth applications will go up on February 19th, the same day as the internship fair. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you so much. Um, we next have Commissioner Schooley with Youth Recognition. Thank you, Chair Bruso. So again, just a recap of what the Youth Recognition Awards are. It's uh, an event that we host as the Youth Commission to recognize teens in our community who have done an outstanding amount of volunteer work and just have really given back to the community. So. Uh, we need organizations and agencies to nominate teens who they think have done a great amount of volunteer work and have given back to the community. So um, applications can be found at toaks.org forward slash youth. And the deadline for applications are due by March 13th. And again, if you're a teen, go ahead and encourage your counselors or your volunteer advisors to um, nominate you. So thank you. Back to you, Chair Brizzo. Perfect. And lastly, we have Commissioner Shaw again talking about public information. Hi again. Um, I'm Douglas Shaw, the public information chair. So just really quickly, we do, um, I just want to run by, uh, once again, we have Instagram, which is at Thousand Oaks YC. Our Twitter is at TO Youth. And most of our information, such as when we're having therapeutic dance work parties, um, how and finding out more information about the Youth Recognition Awards, all sorts of information like that, go ahead and look us up on Facebook. We're the Thousand Oaks Youth Commission. Also, in addition to that, we recently updated our website, um, www.toaks.org forward slash youth. And if we um, could show the computer screen, basically what we can see is that we have an updated set of information. On top, you can see the event that Commissioner Walshaw mentioned earlier, um, a very new, unique drug conference experience, uh, which you can apply for, um, registrate for, excuse me. And if you scroll down, you'll see some more information on the website. You'll find some information on currently what youth implementation is doing and has achieved in the past. 
You'll also see some links that will lead you to various applications we're opening up, such as the Youth Recognition Awards. And also, uh, I believe... Steve will be up there. And also for the therapeutic dance. Yes. Once again, if you ever need to contact us, at the very bottom of the page, you can see our email and phone number. And that's all for public information. Thank you. Thank you so much, Commissioner Shao. And lastly, we go to Commissioner Bryman for uh, Commissioner comments. <laughs> now is the time in the meeting where commissioners can comment and no action will be taken. Is there any commissioner comments? Commissioner Owens. Hello. I would just like to um, announce some information about the Westlake Village Art Guild. Um, they're holding a student awards art show. Uh, this is for high school seniors or juniors who create their own original piece in a variety of mediums. Submit materials by February 21st, and you'll be entered into this awards art this art show where you can win up to $100. I'm sorry, up to $250 if you're best in the show. Thank you. Commissioner Shaw. Again, um, on Thursday, February 19th at 6 p.m. in the Fred Cavley Theater of the Civics Art Plaza, we'll be having our internship fair. It'll be a really unique opportunity. The city program is such an amazing program that benefits both, both businesses, uh, students, and the community in general. We hope to see you there. Commissioner Bird. Just building on what Douglas said, one more time, it is not too late to sign up if you are a business, so please go on toaks.org forward slash city and sign up if you are interested. It, uh, the applications are open until February 13th, so please sign up if you're interested. It's a great opportunity, and everyone who did it last year is completely satisfied, and it's awesome. Thank you. Chair Brousseau. Um, just a few other opportunities that I want to reiterate. Um, next week, uh, at what, next week, um, this Wednesday, next Wednesday, excuse me, uh, at 6 p.m. here at the Civic Arts Plaza, we'll be having our next implementation meeting. So if you're a teen looking to get involved um, with our environment, our recreation, or our drugs and alcohol team, um, I would highly encourage you to come out and participate. Um, on that note, our drugs and alcohol team is hosting, um, like Commissioner Walshaw said, a, a substance abuse conference um, on February 21st from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. at the Thousand Oaks Teen Center. Um, and if you'd like to register for that, you can do so at toaks.org slash youth. Um, it's going to be a, a great seminar, and I know that the um, team has been working very hard to produce um, a schedule that's going to be focused around talking and having a, a productive conversation about substance abuse as opposed to just kind of lectures. Um, so I think it's going to be really great, and I would highly encourage you to sign up. We can only take about 80 kids, so make sure to do it as soon as possible. Anyone else? Oh, okay, thank you. Okay, so with that, the uh, February 4th meeting of the Thousand Oaks Youth Commission is adjourned at 7.24 p.m. <laughs>